In this video, we'll be analyzing all the important articles and the topics from the 22nd of May's newspapers. So firstly, we are starting with the Hindu newspaper. So this is regarding the rupees 2000 notes, the recent change that has been announced, we know about that. But here it is talking about the SBI bank's U-turn. So SBI bank ne ye bola ki koi aapko ID card nahi dena padega, koi slip nahi provide ki jayegi if you are swapping or you are there to exchange rupees 2000 notes. But again, agar koi ID card nahi maang rahe hai, wo log ya koi slip nahi provide ki jari hai, to ek to proof nahi hai ki kis insaan ne kitna amount exchange karaya. Obviously, wo pata hona is very important. So, this regarding, उन्होंने बोला कि RBI it had not issued any orders कि आपको proof collect करना है for exchanging the notes. But the finance ministry है it had intervened to make SBI change its directive. So, cash flow की बात करें SBI it has issued instructions to all its branches regarding the exchange. So, उसने बोला कोई requisition slip is not required for the exchange of rupees 2000 notes up to a limit of rupees 20,000 जो आप एक time पे exchange करा सकते हो, कोई identity proof provide करने की जरूरत नहीं है and RBI ने 19 में को जो decision announce किया कि rupees 2000 currency notes would be completely withdrawn from the circulation but उन्होंने ऐसे कोई directives issue नहीं किये so facility for exchange will be available from 23rd of May. So baki jo intricacy hai that we've already discussed. So Prime Minister says ki countries, they should respect the sovereignty. So unrest in, in any part of the world affects all the countries of the global community. Definitely. This is very true because we are economically interlinked in this globalized world. So har ek country pay globally irrespective of the part ki whether that country is a part of or it's a like party of that conflict or not still it gets impacted so he was speaking at the working session number nine of the g7 summit and he reiterated india's commitment to do everything to bring an end to this war in ukraine and said ki all the countries they need to respect the sovereignty and the territorial integrity of the member states of the united nations so these are some of the keywords which we need to keep in mind. Apart from that, let's move forward. So regarding ordinance, aapko pata hona Konsa article hai of the constitution which talks about ordinance issuing power and then all the important things related to ordinances. That is also important. On the editorial page, let's see what are the important things here for us today. Judging Jallikattu, we have discussed in newspaper newspaper. So again, it's a repeat. Regarding Quad, so India as a Quad-led bio-manufacturing hub. So this can be one of the India's role in Quad. So in March 2021, Quad me basically Australia, India, Japan, and US, they are a party. They have set up a critical and emerging technology working group to facilitate cooperation, monitor the trends, and scout for opportunities related to the developments in critical and emerging technologies. So regarding this, India or US ke beach may be ISET is an initiative which is focusing upon the critical and emerging technologies. So you need to know about that as well. However, the potential for the Quad cooperation in biotech remains insufficiently tapped. So establishment of a Quad-led biomanufacturing hub in India, it will give the necessary fillip to enhance this cooperation. So this is one potential area where Quad can work. So biomanufacturing uses living systems, particularly microorganisms ko use kiya jata hai, cell cultures ke, create kiya jate hai, laboratories mein, to produce molecules and materials on a commercial scale. So it has the potential to transform the global industrial system with up to 60% of the physical inputs to the global economy expected to be product, uh, producible using this technology. So many countries including US, China, they recognize that there is a need 
कि वी नीड टू ऑप्टिमाइज दिस इको सिस्टम ऑफ बायो मैन्युफैक्चरिंग एंड वी नीड टू हैव लाइक डिजाइन स्पेसिफिक पॉलिसीज सो दैट जो बायो इकोनॉमिक्स के अराउंड रिवॉल्व करे so quad and complementary strengths if we talk about it so india's national biotechnology development strategy it also envisions the country as a global manufact global bio manufacturing hub by 2025 so we have this national strategy you can go through it the important features that are important and here the target year is given as 2025 that we visualize india as a global bio manufacturing hub by 2025 so the target has been set at 100 billion dollars for this hub and it's important to recognize that india's ambitions require external support also we'll be requiring the external support in the terms of the experience of different countries that can help us and particularly through the quad partners they would be playing an important role to enable the initial development so quad and bio manufacturing area mein there is still more potential where we can collaborate and work together so india it is the ideal choice to host the bio manufacturing hub thanks to its existing infrastructure that we have which is supporting you know research and development mein and then we have we are the pharmaceutical manufacturing we are having this expertise and the available workforce the skilled workforce that we have in this particular area so that's why india becomes an ideal choice for bio manufacturing accordingly to according to the australian strategic policy institute also india is among the top performers when we talk about bio manufacturing both in terms of quality of research that is carried out in india and the output that is there and in terms of sharing among the research publications also so india also has significant potential in the low cost bio manufacturing also so particularly that is in the production of enzymes regions research materials and equipments so like we we have this advantage of low cost bio manufacturing apart from that india is like uh, the cost of manufacturing in india is around 33% lower when we compare to that in us so india may we still require significant capability and capacity uplifts to become the world leader in bio manufacturing still like when more potential remains on india in terms of improvement but among all the quad countries india is still the top performer so we need to strengthen more of the physical infrastructure so we have this aim of becoming a leading bio manufacturing hub with plans to increase fermentation capacity tenfold to 10 million liters in the next 3 to 5 years china has also expressed its intention to capture this market so our competitor is china so the dependence on bio manufacturing sector it will be detrimental to both india and the quad because uh, if we are dependent upon china in terms of aps which are key starting materials and the related products so that would be basically not that safe in coming times so we need to you know develop our self reliance and the domestic capabilities regarding this so we need to still boost the workforce and lower the barriers which still exist so to scale up this bio manufacturing sector we need to uplift the workforce quality so we need to work more upon skilled workforce so while there are many life sciences professions in the country they lack access to cutting edge technology that's where where we can work and the training is also one area where we can work more so here cross quad collaboration can help us and also the hub it can also harmonize the language regulations and data sharing regarding bio manufacturing so as to secure the supply chains for quad nations so proposed hub in india can keep capitalize on the economic potential of bio manufacturing and address the existing and the potential vulnerabilities in the global system so india it can become a leading player in the field of bio manufacturing and help the quad to compete in this key area so definitely here the role of india becomes very very important so what is a human pangenome map so what is 
genome sequencing and why is it important why is the reference genome map considered one of the most important scientific breakthroughs and what is the difference between a reference map and a pan genome map so how is india hoping to benefit from the latest genome map so this is all related to science so what is actually a genome? So it is the blueprint of life. It is a collection of all the genes and the regions between the genes which are contained in our 23 pairs of chromosomes. So each chromosome, it is a contiguous stretch of DNA string. You can see that how it's been like shown in this picture. It is a DNA string. And in other words, our genome, they consist 23 different strings. So each is composed of millions of individual building blocks which are called nucleotides or the bases so total char type ke bases hote hai, which is at gnc so agar i go by the uh, full form a stands for adenine thymine guanine and cytosine so these are four types of bases and they occur in different types of pairs so genome sequencing, it's, it's a type of a method which is used to determine the precise order of the four letters and how they are arranged in the chromosomes. So they pairs may exist karte, individually exist nahi karte, so different combinations hote and they exist in the form of pairs. So sequencing individual genomes, they help us understand ki kaise human diversity at the genetic level and how that exists. So basically more understanding regarding the human diversity at the genetic level the micro level and how prone we are to certain diseases so even in reducing the disease burden genome sequencing can play a vital role so se, we can say ki genome jo hota hai, that is a kind of identity card like aadhar card jo hota hai paas. so as each of our aadhar card wo unique hai har insaan ka jo aadhar number hai that is unique that is different so similarly jo hamara genome bhi hai har ek individual ka that is also unique so sequencing of individual genomes of all the humans definitely wo bahut expensive hai kyunki har ek insaan ka wo unique hai har ek ka wo different hai to aap usko generalize nahi kar sakte to to carry out this exercise at individual level definitely takes a lot of efforts and money but to circumvent this, one can have a collective identity card also. For example, we can have a single genome identity card for everyone which is living in a particular region. So reference genome kya hote? So genomes which are like newly sequenced, they are compared to a reference map which is called a reference genome. So reference ke liye, aap kisi dusre genome ko refer karte ho for comparison to usko reference genome bolte hain aur pan genome map kya hota hai so unlike the earlier jo reference genome ke case mein humne dekha which is a linear sequence so pan genome ek graph type mein hota hai so linear sequence mein jo reference genome hota hai wo linear sequence hota hai aur jo pan genome uh, map hota hai that is in the form of a graph so jo graph hai of each chromosome that is like a bamboo stem with nodes where a stretch of sequences of the 47 individuals they converge and where internodes of varying length and okay this is like too much technical itna deep mein jaane ki zarurat nahi hai but genome sequencing, all of that is very important for us to understand. So open network for digital commerce. Kya hota hai? This is a very important topic. And exam may be, it has the potential of being asked. So how does the ONDC intend to achieve a level playing field for the online sellers? And why are the major e-commerce players like Amazon, Flipkart, they're reluctant to join the ONDC? So ONDC is very much in news mein raha hai and government, they want to change the fundamental structure hai of the e-commerce market from the current platform-centric model to an open network model. So right now what we have is the platform-centric model. So we want to transit towards open network model. This is what the government intends to do. So ONDC, which is Open Network for Digital Commerce, it's modeled after the 
UPI project that is seen as a success by many. Definitely, UPI has been success in India. So similarly, on similar lines, government is coming up with ONDC. So that jo basic fundamental structure hai of how the e-commerce platforms they work, usko government first say restructure, first say change kar sake as per the its desires. So government chahti hai ki jo buyers and sellers hai on e-commerce market platform, they can transact regardless of the platforms on which they are registered. So under ONDC, a buyer which is registered on Amazon, for example, may directly purchase the goods from a seller who sells on Flipkart. So here is registration. Ki baat ki jari. It is not important that you have to get registered every time on ONDC. Or you have to one time register one time. If you are registered on any platform, pe registered ho, sir, uh, so still here on ONDC, you can buy the goods from another platform like Flipkart. So why is the central government pushing for it, pushing more for its promotion? Government commandna ye hai ki jo ONDC hai, it will put an end to the domination of e-commerce market by a few large platforms. Abhi ki agar hum baat kare market competition mein to few dominant large players hai jinki, malab jinke paas zada power hai, Amazon and likewise bhoat sare or platforms hai, Flipkart ho gaya, Amazon ho gaya. So, in ki jo power hai usko kam karne ke liye government is bringing up this ONDC. So it says ki e-commerce market it is currently broken into silos. Malab different different silos mein it is separately categorized and it is operated and dominated by the private platforms. So private players ki monopoly ko kam karne ke liye step diya ja raha hai. Food delivery app ne baat kare to Swiggy and Zomato they have the dominant power and they have been accused of charging high commissions from the sellers. So jo cost parti hai consumers ko wo bhi kam ho paayegi through ONDC and that is one of the benefits, one of the advantages that is offered by ONDC to the consumers. So critics ka kya maana hai? They argue ki jo corporate benefits hai of an open network for digital commerce, they are far from certain at the moment. So unka maana ye jo benefits ki baat ki jari, it is not an assurance ki they would be there and they would be like helping us. So for one, they are saying that sellers, they are already free to list their products across various e-commerce platforms. Even in today's platform-centric e-commerce model, buyers, they also routinely shop across the platforms. So then there are also services like price comparison that are offered by various private websites that bridge the information gap. So these experts ka manna hai, but actually you can't say that reality mate is so very true. So these are some of the efforts being taken by government. So again, after sugar, it is time to regulate how much salt is being consumed. So salt reduction in diet, it is the most cost-effective measure to control the non-communicable diseases. So if we have non-communicable diseases, ka burden reduce karna hai, to salt intake regulation is the most important area. So even WHO, it had previously cautioned that the world is off track to achieve its global target of reducing the salt intake by 30% by 2025. So this is the global target that salt intake ko hume reduce karna by 30% by 2025. But still we are not on track. Yeah, we are on not the right path to achieve this target. And only 5% of the WHO member countries are there. Pe, uh, we can say they have mandatory and comprehensive sodium reducing policies. Bhi hai. But only 5% of the countries are there. So salt ka jo chemical formula, all of us know it is NaCl, NACL, sodium chloride. So definitely it's unhealthy in diet and it's a leading cause of non-communicable diseases with excess sodium being the main culprit. So WHO ki kuch guidelines bhi hai ki itna salt intake it is safer for an individual but still as we say we are relying so much on, um, on the junk food and we are basically not so concerned until and unless we are diagnosed with a particular disease. So that you know not so yeah the ignorant nature we can say that is like obviously not acceptable which 
इज नॉट अप्रिशिएटेड ऑल्सो सो एक्सेस ऑफ सॉल्ट के क्या इफेक्ट हो सकते हैं अनफॉर्चुनेटली जो सोडियम लेबलिंग है इट इज नॉट मैंडेटरी इन आर कंट्री सो फॉर जो सोडियम लेबलिंग है दैट इज नॉट इम्पोर्टेंट लाइक अगर आप कोई ऐसा फूड प्रोडक्ट बाय करते हो तो उसके पीछे प्रॉपर न्यूट्रिय की डिटेल्स मैंशन होती है बट जो सोडियम लेबलिंग है दैट इज नॉट अ मैंडेटरी थिंग इन आर कंट्री सो फॉर सो इट्स ऑल्सो इम्पोर्टेंट टू यूज द वर्ड सोल्ट रात देन सोडियम सो दैट जो लोग हैं जो आम जनता है वो समझ सके क्योंकि ऑब्वियसली वो ज्यादा फ्रीक्वेंटली दे कैन अंडरस्टैंड वेन वी टॉक अबाउट सोल्ट एंड नॉट सोडियम so recent study shows ki there's a connection between salt consumption and atherosclerosis even in the absence of hypertension so jo atherosclerosis hai it's a disease which blocks the blood vessels matlab severe diseases are possible because of high concentration of sodium in our body so it's important that we reduce the intake coming on the world page so g7 wants to de risk not decouple from china so this has been clarified by joe biden ki it wants to de risk and not decouple from china so obviously decoupling from china is not also so matlab so practical and possible thing kyunki there are number of things on which different countries are dependent upon china so it's be it will be like as i said not even practically possible so de-risking from china is much more important thing as per even that has been highlighted by joe biden the president of usa says key g7 leaders they agreed to diversify the supply chains to reduce the dependence on one country so that's china so he expects a thaw in relations with beijing and hopes to speak with See jumping very soon. So, if we try to understand and comprehend this cartoon, so this is Russia, this is China. So their closeness definitely that's increasing, and it is trying to show that the G seven countries have sanctions imposed on Russia. They have bounced over Russia to China and then further. मतलब कि जो sanctions imposed किए गए उनका कोई ऐसा असर नहीं हुआ on Russia. So this is what it is trying to portray. coming to financial express so india inc steps up the capital expenditure plans 14% rise targeted for the current financial year loosening the purse strings so here top companies by increase in their capital expenditure so adani green energy ultra tech cement so here the data has been given accordingly so for us it's important we know the difference between capital expenditure and revenue expenditure so asia's largest coal mine the government is scaling up the annual production of the scl's gevra coal mine to 70 million tons making it the largest in asia so coal mines ka you need to know ki india mein kahan kahan kaun si state mein coal mines located hain <coughs> sorry so their location that becomes important एंड जो क्वालिटी ऑफ कोल हमें इंडिया में मिलता है उसकी प्रॉपर्टीज भी पता होना इज इम्पोर्टेंट फॉर अस सो मशीनरी इम्पोर्ट्स अप अमिट द ओवरऑल स्लाइड सो वी आर सीइंग की इम्पोर्ट्स दे आर आल्सो फॉलोइंग बट मशीनरी इम्पोर्ट्स दे आर ऑन द राइज सो इंडिया इंक पेज लेस फॉर द इम्पोर्टेड इनपुट्स इन्वेस्टमेंट डिमांड इन द इकोनमी दैट स्टिल रिमेन्स स्ट्रॉन्ग सो दैट इज वन ऑफ द स्ट्रॉन्ग थिंग्स वी कैन से इज driving the growth in indian economy
सो कुमिन सीड्स की हम बात की गई है जिसको हम लोकली जीरा बोलते हैं सो इट्स प्राइजेस इज इंक्रीज क्योंकि आउटपुट इज वेरी लो एंड डिमांड इज वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग सो बिकॉज ऑफ डिमांड सप्लाई मिस मैच द प्राइजेज आर इंक्रीजिंग एंड द एवरेज मंडी प्राइजेज ऑफ द कमिन सीड्स हैज रिजन हंड्रेड एंड फोर परसेंट इज राइज इन द प्राइजेज ऑन ईयर टू अ रिकॉर्ड फोर हंड्रेड एंड in gujarat so cumin seeds are becoming so expensive so gujarat it is the hub of trade in this commodity and how it is grown wo sab thoda aap dekh lena baki yahan pe you can see there it's a map if you want to try to understand different countries ki kahan ka location hai it is talking about undersea natural gas pipeline from gulf of india so i guess it's plan how it would be laid down it has been shown here so uh, gujarat landfall point this is here arabian sea sail will be connected with oman and here like name of different ports are also mentioned the sohar port which is in oman and here we have uae here we have qatar iraq iran is here and then afghanistan pakistan and it will be also connecting turkmenistan so hamare liye ye important ho jata hai ki it will be connecting which all countries so definitely it would be connecting saudi arabia also so you can just you know google it once and find out exactly ki it will be connecting which all countries taking up indian express newspaper finally so in indian express so prime minister indian prime minister g7 says ki you need to raise the voice against unilateral changes in status quo ki agar koi country aise steps le rahi hai to unilaterally change the status quo so definitely we need to raise our voice against that and not let that happen so remarks they are being read in the backdrop of the aggressive stance by russia and china so indirectly he was referring to russia ukraine war so finding mates for india's single african jumbos so difference between an asian elephant and african elephant you can find out about that so shankar aged around 27 is it's a picture from the delhi zoo it is a lone african elephant which is there in india and wild african elephants they can live up till 70 years on the editorial page here we see it, it is again talking about federalism and jo recent supreme court ka verdict tha regarding who will be having the ultimate control over bureaucracy in delhi so it's a go uh, about that about that same judgment so we have already discussed this thing and then so animal spirits they are hushed and elusive so tighter financial conditions and the risk like demand coming under pressure they are curbing the investment activity so india's investment slowdown 
it began in the early part of the last decade. So investment to GDP ratio, it fell from around 34% in 2011-12 to 27.3% during the pandemic year of 2020-21. So our investment to GDP ratio, hai, we are seeing ki it has been falling since the last decade. But if you have clear trend, hai, so you can just Google about it and read. So here it was like recorded at 34% and right now it was at 27.3% when the COVID-19 pandemic started. So this is one thing, it's very clear, the investment to GDP ratio, it has fallen. So it has risen since then, including the pandemic year of COVID-19 of 2020-21, the investment ratio, it has averaged around 29% since 2014-15. So COVID-19, it has started rising up. So going by the reasons behind this slowdown, it is because of the subdued activity by both the corporates and the households. On the other hand, the share of the larger public sector, it has held fairly steady over this period as the increase in the capex by the government, it has been offset by the slower pace of spending by the public sector enterprises. So in case of private sector, investment activity has been fairly muted in the industrial sectors. So even private sector, it has not been investing much. And when we talk about manufacturing, electricity, gas, and water supply and construction, so here we have seen a slowdown as far as the private sector investment is concerned. Then over the entire decade of 2011-12 to 2021-22, Private investment in electricity, gas, and water supply, they grew by around 7%, construction by 25%, manufacturing by 73%. So all in all, the total private sector investment grew by 141%. As the firms, they invested more in services such as communications and transport. So services is more investment they teach investment. And investment slowdown, household sector may or comparatively bahut zada slow hua hai or fall hua hai. So much of this, it is on account of real estate sector, ownership of dwelling and professional services sector. So household investment to real estate sector may rahi, it is grown by around 20% over this decade, while jo overall household investments see they roughly doubled, driven by greater outlays in the dwellings and building structures in the sectors like trade and repair, hotels and restaurants, construction, transportation, and likewise. So, abhi hum agar baat kare, right now we are uh, at a very, very important point as far as investment cycle is concerned. So, abhi we see ki banking system mein jun ki books thi, they have been cleared off. NPS, they have been falling. And corporate sector, it is also bringing down its debt to more manageable levels. So, given these two things and changes, so we see and we expect that economy, it is on the cusp of an investment upturn. So graph, it is in a way turning, taking a turn towards the upper side as far as investment is concerned. So that is, we can say, one of the positive things also at the same time. So Marale, pura like trend, Piche ka kya trend raha hai, that is important that we just go through. And abhi kya situation hai, how things are changing. So G7's climate wish list humne kal ki newspaper mein dega that they have set the target of 2050 to be net zero specifically for the major economies. This is the target here. Baki you can just go through this once. And it is talking about end to fossil fuels. So countries like G7 countries they put no deadline to ending the use of fossil fuels. So Fossil fuels ko completely, unka jo users ko end karne ke liye koi deadline abhi as such nahi set ki gai hai. It is only saying ki they were committed to accelerating the phase out of the unabated fossil fuels. 
and G7 had also claimed that they had stopped financing the new fossil fuel based energy projects. So, scalability. उन्होंने जो फंडिंग वो प्रोवाइड करते हैं सपोर्ट प्रोवाइड करते हैं दे हैव स्टॉप्ड दैट सो चाइना हैज सेड दैट इट वुड टर्न नेट जीरो बाय ओनली 2060 इंडिया का जो टारगेट था मैंने आपको मेंशन भी किया था इट इज 2070 एंड जी7 दे एक्सपेक्ट कि 2025 तक पीक हम रीच कर जाएंगे बामुक्त रीजन इट्स अ न्यूज़ सो इसका सबसे पहले मैं आपको समझते हैं This is the location in red color, red dot, Pamukt region. Here it is Kharkiv, where it is Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. And water bodies, the rest of the countries, ki, like which country shares borders with which all countries, that's also important. So Zelensky has clarified that the city over which fighting is raged for months, it has not fallen to Russia. So still it remains under the control of Ukraine. And Bahamukt, it is not occupied by the Russian Federation as of today. is coming from the ukrainian president so city of bamuk it's a small mining town in the dontisk province of eastern ukraine and it had a pre-war population of 70 to 80000 it is not have any militarily important industrial strategically vital location nahi hai and would not be counted as important town in the military invasion also so it is proximate to several important roads that may have some strategic value to the russian advance so ye kuch important reasons hai behind the bahmukt region and सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ द सिटी इट इज प्रमारली सिम्बॉलिक अकॉर्डिंग टू एक्सपर्ट्स ऐसा कुछ बहुत ज्यादा स्ट्रेटेजिकली इम्पोर्टेंट भी नहीं है सो इट हेड बिकम पॉलिटिकली सो इम्पोर्टेंट दैट इफ यू रियली वॉन्टेड टू वीक इन रशियन यू हैड टू मेक दम फाइट फॉर एवरी ब्लॉक दैट्स वाई इट्स सच अ हॉरेबल बैटल बिकॉज दे रियली डिड फाइट बिल्डिंग टू बिल्डिंग so as price falls sunflower booms so global prices of edible oils which hit an all time high because of the russia's invasion have now crashed so sunflower has seen the greatest volatility over the last one year as india's oil imports they seem set for a record high this november october year sunflower along with palm has led the surge so definitely jab hum edible oil imports ki baat karte hain india mein to that is like very huge we are usually dependent upon the imports and wahan pe we are seeing ki agar hum trend ko bhi samjhe to that is make uh, like we have hit a new record high in november october last year and jo sunflower uh, oil mein jo prices volatility rahi hai given that was very huge so palm oil sunflower oil do major components hai jisme hame import increase dekhne ko mila hai and yahan pe we also have the data so imports of the edible oil palm oil ke sabse pehle agar hum dekhe to 2017 18 se 87 94 72 so it has been declining in a way we can say matlab 2017 18 mein it was 87 lakh tons and it reached the peak of 94 uske baad se we are seeing ki it has been declining and obviously 2021 22 mein because of covid 19 to bahut zyada hi kam tha so that is the amount iske alawa soya bean ka bhi figure de rakhe hain so uh, sunflower oil ka agar hum dekhe to 25 lakh tons was it was a figure in 2017 18 then right now also it has been falling even like before covid 19 it was falling and then we have the total figures also so even that has been falling so india ke consumption ki baat kare to we consume around 25 to 24 million tons of cooking oil annually जिसमें से 13.5 टू 14 मिलियन टन्स को हम इंपोर्ट करते हैं जो बैलेंस है वो डोमेस्टिकली हमारे पास लाइक अवेलेबल होता है तो सनफ्लावर इट इज द फोर्थ लार्जेस्ट कंज्यूम विच इज बिहाइंड मस्टर्ड सोयाबीन एंड पाम ऑयल सो सबसे ज्यादा हम पाम ऑयल कंज्यूम करते हैं उसके बाद सोयाबीन ऑयल है देन मस्टर्ड ऑयल एंड देन वी हैव द सनफ्लावर ऑयल 
सो ये भी मतलब स्टेट सिविल सर्विसेज में पूछा जा सकता है पाम ऑयल सोयाबीन देन मस्टर्ड एंड देन सनफ्लावर ऑयल सो बोथ द सनफ्लावर एंड पाम ऑयल दे आर ऑलमोस्ट कंप्लीटली इम्पोर्टेड ऑलमोस्ट लिखा हुआ है एंड डोमेस्टिक प्रोडक्शन इट इज लाइक हार्डली फिफ्टी थाउजेंड टन एंड पॉइंट थ्री मिलियन टन रिस्पेक्टिवली एंड मस्टर्ड एंड सोयाबीन ऑयल जो है उनका जो डोमेस्टिक आउटपुट है इट इज क्लोज टू हंड्रेड परसेंट एंड थर्टी परसेंट रिस्पेक्टिवली सो मस्टर्ड का तो हंड्रेड डोमेस्टिक आउटपुट हंड्रेड परसेंट हमारे पास डोमेस्टिकली अवेलेबल है So definitely prices they are seeing fluctuations also and market is also evolving consumption ki baat kare to roughly 70% jo sunflower oil hai that is consumed in south with maharashtra the top state and other states making up the rest so one of the reasons of the geographical skew has to do with the sunflower being traditionally grown in karnataka telangana and maharashtra mein sunflowers cultivate bhi kiye jate hain so that's all for today thank you so much for joining us and do like this video also and also subscribe to the channel